Hey guys, it's Wilson from the Exact Network, and today we're interviewing Westmont Rich. What's the deal? What's the deal? What's the deal? All right, so look, we got this setup here, and we got you know you got to explain to us what this this is all about. We walked in here, and this looks you know a little different. It's a pigeon loft. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, um, on my right side is Cox. On um, my left side is females, uh, young females, and behind me is young males. Um, these are racing pigeons. You know what I'm saying? Racing. Some of the best genetics in the world that was available to me at the time that I was purchasing them. Um, so this probably like, it's probably like over three hundred thousand in pigeons right here, just right. Here. Oh wow, man, we right here. I'm saying in my, in my, on my property right here, my loft, man. This is my second loft right here. We got a little bit of anything in here. You know what I'm saying? To the left hand side right here, we got cocks. You know what I'm saying? In the middle, we got some, some young cocks on the right hand side. Um, we got the hens. Switched them up yesterday, so we might have one or one or two switched up for the most part. Um, everybody's on the um, Kaki and Young Bar program. Um, like I said, we got everything here. We got new kittle, best kittle, Black Power or not, Sharky, uh, Soraya, Super 46, um, Russell, African Heat, Zulu, Casbor, um, um, Wolverine, um, Triple Five Five. We got a little bit of everything. In here, you know what I'm saying? Some of the best genetics in the world. You know what what got you, you know, to start this venture? Um, I don't know, like, you know, like, I'm already good at, you know, breeding, you know, that's my thing. I do the, you know, high power, hyper exclusive dogs with the, you know, with the breeding. So it's like, I had to cross over in the summer or I had to multitask with something that had to involve breeding, but that was harder than breeding dogs, I felt like, that, that um, that was harder for me. I needed a little something that was a little harder. And um, the pigeons was perfect. You know, they, they raised pigeons all over the world. You know, Asia, United States, Belgium, China, Thailand. Like, you know, it's a United, it's, it's an international sport. And um, personally, I just never seen nobody in my culture look to walk, talk like me involved. So I kind of wanted to, that's another reason I wanted to get involved, you know what I'm saying? Just for, I really don't really see no, you know, no young youth blacks that's racing pigeons at a high level. So that's another reason why I wanted to get involved. How'd you even get like, you know, who introduced you to this, this breeding side of things? Like my, my, my pops and my uncle had pigeons like probably half of my life. My uncle still got pigeons, so I said my whole life, but they had the rollers, the ones that just flip, you know what I'm saying? So like, you know, I was never interested into the rollers, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, 20 some, 20 some odd years later, um, maybe like a year and a half ago, um, I was seeing on Instagram, I started seeing the racing pigeons. Then I started doing my research and then, I did like damn near a year worth of research before I bought a pigeon though, you know what I'm saying? So I did it damn near maybe like, you so know. this is this has been in the works. Like you didn't just you know buy no pigeon out of nowhere and Fuck no. started it. No, no, no. It took me for sure like a year to do research on it. You know, like the genetics, like the the type of races. You know, learning about learning about the birds, how to breed them. You know, how to take care of them, how to medicate them. Just A to Z. You know, for me just le for me to learn enough for me to go in. And like me, I don't halfway do nothing. So if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. So that's why I didn't play do it. That's why I waited till I felt like I knew enough. You know right saying? here, we got some of my breeding cages. We got nine on this side, nine on the opposite side. Um, very convenient. We got the grid tray in the middle. We got the two, you know, two food trays on the other side. And it's a very convenient. We got the slide out tray. The slide out, we vacuum that uh, with, the, with the wet dry vac. Dump it in the trash can. Um, uh, these are the first time I use these breeding cages. I got some more I'm gonna show y'all. I actually like these a lot. Uh, right now in this breeding cage right here, I got Black Power uh, seven times inbred Black Power bred to a new kittle, uh, a new kittle bird, which is a uh, Angelina, Angelina daughter, um, Angelina the new kittle. In this cage right here, we got. I'm just telling. I ain't gonna tell you anything. I'm gonna give you a little sneak peek. And this, and this right here, in this breeding cage right here, we got a two times Soraya, which so or not. you're gonna have to explain to me, like what, what's the difference? Like, you know, in different breeding scenarios, the male is a little bit more important than the female. In the pigeon game, like how, how does it go? She like, the pigeons is different because you need a pair to breed. See, with the dogs, you know, you could just send, send sperm out, you know, and 
you know, you don't have to be, you don't have to have the male. Um, they got some new shit going on with some AIs and some pigeons, but it's very few people doing it. It is people that can do it though. But the male and the females is as important, if you ask me. You know, that's opinion more than a factual question. But to me, it's like it's even because you can't, you can't breed without both. And um, um, some people say cocks. You know, I hear a lot of people say cocks, the, the males. But um, I really don't feel that way. I feel like it's both, you know. Like if we was breeding dogs, then I would tell you it's a female. Yeah. If when it, when, it, when it come to racing pitches, I don't feel that way. So it's it's a little bit more even in your opinion. For sure. For sure, it's a little bit more even. So when you say like there's different there's different types because I, I see all these pigeons, they're all not the same. They're not so like what makes certain pigeons better than others? If, if my you know. I mean, really, it's built on racing results. It's really based on racing results. So like, you know, the pigeon that performed. Is the is the pigeons that get the most the most kudos the most credit consistently? G the, these genetics are performing. These are the birds that are getting sought after, and um, it's based on results about the birds' results. You know, so it's not like a lot of cap on it. It's not like a lot of like like nobody like you. You really can't get too much recognition that you don't deserve because it's based off winning. You know, so you have to win to be respected heavy. So it's like. You know, you gonna have to know how to breed to win for sure. Right here we got Victoria Farms winner from last year, 2021. Clutch mate sister, same mother, same father, produced by Aztec. Um, I got her paired with uh, inbred Porsche 911 with the time of six, half time of six, half the Romero line, half um, Porsche 911. Um, she got two babies in there. They ready to they ready to come up out of there. She laying on two more eggs. So probably, probably at night I'll take these two babies up out of here and um, uh, switch them out and put them in a breakup pens, a young bird pen. And like I said, uh, like I said, that's Victoria Farr's winner. Her clutch mate sister, little mate sister, same mother, same father, won over, I believe, $160,000 about six months ago. So, you know, you know, we got we got a little bit so of everything. On that, like, how did you know how to get, you know, the genetics that you got? Like I said, I come from breeding already, you know? So I already know like how to buy something or who to go to. So I spent, you know, like I said, within that year of time I spent, um, within that year of time I spent doing homework, um, I came across Auto Family Loft, um, Aztec, Aztec Loft, and between them two, I probably purchased, I probably say like 90% of my birds from them two fanciers. Um, them was the two people I felt comfortable spending a large amount of money with. You starting off um, being that um, race results, just but just purely based on race results. Okay. Consistency, you know, consistency. consistency and winning big races. Aztec won second place super race in Victoria Falls, South Africa, which is a major race, and then he won first place Hoosier, Indiana, which is the biggest race in the United States within the same year. Otto was consistent, you know, with quality. Um, with or not, and a little bit of everything he got going on is consistent. Um, between them, them two camps, them two losses, it took me some time to even go to them. You know, I was looking at first, so, but you know, when I was ready, I I went hard. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like in this game, the pigeon game, what what's more important, the performance of the the pigeons, or like the promotion that you give? The pigeons themselves. The the performance. You can't promote nothing that ain't nothing. Like it's the performance. Words you know? I can name that you know that was a good buy. You know what I'm saying? For, I feel you know highly about. I got uh, or not the best kittle, uh, or not bred to that wreck. Um, best kittle daughter. I got two of them. I got um, for last year's Victoria Falls, won by Aztec. I got the litter mate clutch to the winner. Um, last year, uh, or not the best kiddo won first place in South Africa. I got, like I said, I got some of that. Second place Super Ace Pigeon was Black Power to Verhey Line with the Red Monkey Mix. I got that too. Um, like I said, we got a little bit of everything. Uh, I think with, uh, the year I don't want is the 2016-2017. One of them year, who's your winner? I think I got two two off of her. Uh, that was Sharky Bread to Wolverine. Um, we got a little bit of everything, you know what I'm saying? And um, I'm very eager to race this year. Uh, this year gonna be the first year 
that uh, I raced, which would be the biggest race in the hardest race is my first race, which is Victoria Falls. You know, it's a lot of dudes that race pigeons. Like pigeons is a classic sport. So it's a lot of dudes that race pigeons that was doing this and they weren't getting no money for it. They just really love this shit, you know. But it turned into a or sport, you know. Uh, when other countries start getting involved and when the money start getting involved, you gotta understand the more people get involved, the more birds race each other. So if it's me and you racing, and just two people, you gotta pay the race. So just our two, it's, it's our money in the pot. But imagine you racing against 7,500, 10,000 birds. Everybody had to pay for their birds to get in that race. And everybody is paying a decent dollar to get their birds in them type of races, which means if you win, it means something. Because they're sending good birds. Nobody's going to pay to send a bird that don't, you know, that's not regular. That it's not performing. Exactly. So you, when you racing against maybe 8,000, 10,000 birds, it's all good birds. Nobody's going to pay to send bullshit. You know what I'm saying? So, so it's a highly exclusive sport. Like, you can't have no shit bird. No, you can't have no shit bird. But that don't mean that, that don't mean that a $20 pigeon couldn't be the fastest pigeon in the world. It just means that it's not worth it to find out. You want genetics that's based upon consistent winning. Winners breed winners, you know? So you want genetics that's bred off of birds that consistently won. So is it a genetic thing first, or is there a way to make a bird perform better? It's a genetic thing first. Um, with the type of racing we do, which is one loft sport, no. In club and Columbine racing, yes. Club and Columbine is like they race from their house. So everybody they live in a, some, in a certain amount of area, they race from their house, but they base it on what b bird flew fastest. So you, yo, this, this, this man bird might be, you know what I'm saying? He might have a shorter trip home because he was closer to the destination. And he, your bird might have to fly farther or the wind could have been pushing against this bird. With the collarbone and the, the club racing, it's little small things like that. They got people in Belgium and Europe that's purchasing a house built on where the wind pushes at this time of year and all that type of shit. So I don't really like that type of racing because it's not predicated on genetics. I mean, you know, I ain't never been in the pigeon game, which means that if I hopped in the pigeon game and I chose that way to race, which isn't the most decorated way to race right now, it is one-off sport, is the, is the best way now. If I'd have chose that way to race, them dudes that have been 60, 70 years old been racing pigeons, I ain't got no win with them. They know all the tricks in the trade as far as training and, you know, all the small things to get their birds to perform how they want to. But what I am... What I bring to the game, what I'm comfortable with, is I'm, I'm a breeder. I understand how to breed. So, one loft sport meant the most to me because I we just send the, we just send what we breed to the race. They train the bird, they feed the bird, they take care of the bird for two three months, and then the race start. Everybody bird is on the same playing field. It don't matter what you know about. You can't train your bird. You sent your bird to the race. So, um, somebody that been in the game, you may you know maybe 30, 40, 50 years won't have the same experience over me if I was in racing in club and collarbone because we center genetics. Yeah. Yeah. You know what so um, on the genetic side of things, so let's say you guys have a race. Does the top three or is it the top 10% that like finish first and they get their genetics up? Every I mean? race is different. You know what I'm saying? So every race is, 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 is individual private companies. You know, these individual businesses that's doing races. So everybody got a different, you know, how they go about it. Some pay top 50 people, some pay top 100 people. You know what I'm saying? But you gotta understand if you racing against 10,000 birds and you place race in the top 100, that bird is a good bird. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but the, 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 the majority of money in a sport is for sure between the top five birds, I'd probably say, and the auction money of the birds that is probably in the top 20. If You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Them top 20 bird auctions, cause you know, if you win a prestigious race, um, like I said, every race has had their own re rules, but most prestigious races have auctions after the race. If you win, your bird goes to the auction, which is like a certain amount, like from first place to maybe 50th, it's an auction. And they auction off your bird. And um, if you, you get 50% of, of the profit. So if they set a bird for 100, you get 50. You know what I'm saying? Or if you want to buy the bird back, you pay 50% of the price that they're selling it for. So if the bird costs 100, you pay 50 for your bird back. So you got two options. You got the option of taking the money to sell your bird, you know, to probably expand your genetics in other places in the, in the world, or you buy your bird back 
and the babies off that bird are gonna be worth a lot of money. You know what I'm saying? So you could breed that bird and make that money probably anyway, you know? So every it's different strokes for different folks about how they go about it. But So there's many ways to like, you know, expand. There's not just one There's many ways to profit off racing pigeons, you know what I'm saying? And then you know what I'm saying? But it's like it's based on genetics and it's not the the people the, the birds that's winning, their families are consistently winning. It's not like, oh, this bird won and a good ass race, but showing what you see it no more. Like the birds that are high power, their families, the cousins, the aunties, the, the grandsons, the granddaughters, these birds. There's a lot high lineage, lineage with them. Yeah, the, it, the, it's in the birds between the the homing instinct that it takes the bird to get back home and the muscle and the wings and the tail, everything else it takes to create the part, you know, the right bird to win them type of races. And them birds, just, they families just winning. You know what I'm saying? I see, I see, I see. So you know the next question that's coming up. Like, are you going to be throwing your own race? And if you are, how many birds are they going to be For sure, up? for sure, I'm going to throw my own race. Um, it ain't going to be for years, though, you know? Um, I ain't going to do it for years because um, I want to get more involved and ra have more races under my belt before I decide to start my own race. You know what I'm saying? So right now I'm breeding for Victoria Falls. Victoria Falls is the biggest race in the world. Um, I'll be racing that race this year. Um, but uh, as far as me doing my own, I would love to, but it's going to have to be at the right time. You know what I'm saying? Um, you're for sure at the right time. All right. All right. So in, in you know, comparison with dog kennels, like how, how much work does it take to do, you know, like the kennel work of a bird? The birds is easier, but, um, you know, the birds is a lot more easier. You don't have to breed them. They breed themselves. You don't whip the puppies. They take care of the babies by themselves. You know what I'm saying? The 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 cleaning is um is not as consistent as the dogs. It should still be every day, but it's not like a dog like you know maybe twice, two and a half times a day depending on how big your dog setup is. The birds is a lot easier than the dogs, and I believe that. Uh, like, you know, if a lot of people ain't never had birds before, you have a pigeon, like, a, a pigeon is cool. Like, you know, like, people, they got pigeons that they don't have personalities, you know what I'm saying? That's cool. Like, you know what I mean? They, I, I was looking on YouTube um, another day, like, FBI International, some breeders in Ireland, they be, you know, they're playing with their birds, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so um, they're a little bit more of an extension. They're not just birds. They, they can do more. For sure, if they flying five, six hundred miles home from nowhere you know they they're smart these birds are smart you know they, they dropping these birds off um you know anywhere between two to 200 to a thousand miles f from where they live i mean you know and and they flying back racing back like you know that's a, yeah that's it's not, not easy no it's not easy so like on the living conditions of the birds like is it like is there a certain temperature like weather affecting the birds condition and their Bird, like the pigeons is like the most versatile animal in the world as far as weather, you know what I'm saying? They don't them every continent. Uh, the birds need no heater, no AC. They need good ventilation and anything can be kept dry. So they need good ventilation, which means, you know, clean moving air, you know, going in and out. They need good ventilation and they need um, dry, to keep kept dry. Um, bird shit mixed with moisture creates viruses and bacteria, diseases, you know, it, it, salmonella, all type of, you know what I'm saying, stuff that you don't want. Um, but um, the birds can't clean up the loft, they're in the cage. Yeah. So if you don't clean the cage, then it's on you. They're like, they can clean it up. Or if they was in the wild, you know, it's like the bird is in the cage, so it it, it can't clean up the cage. It's on you to keep, you know, keep your birds keep clean. It, keep, keep it going, keep it going. This is my original breeding cages that I started with. Um, I probably only started with these about maybe four or five months before I started with the others. I like these too because they give the bird more space, but a part of me feels like it's a little too much space. But I'm gonna keep it anyway for you know some of my I'm gonna keep it. And I'm gonna just cut out the back and put a sun cage on the back of the cage so the so the birds can go out the back and go through the sun cage in the daytime. Right here we got a we got or not we got or not the best kittle paired up with um, we got or not the best kittle paired up with Sharky the uh, sh no 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 we got or not the best kittle paired up with African Heat to or not. So we got a uh, line bread or not breeding going on right here. Like I said, we got or not the best kittle paired up to African heat to or not. We got a, a, a line breed or not breeding right here. Uh, oh, those blue check cocks come from that best kittle. I'm very happy about uh, my best kittle and my or not birds. Uh, 
as far as what I've been seeing from them, race results, even while I'm breathing mines until I get the chance to race, which is right now I'm going to race soon. But in the meantime, between time, I study the race results and all not to best kid been doing terrific. So I, I'm very happy about the or not to best kid birds. And it's out of two of them right here. Well, four of them actually. Um, and then like, let's say the, are there physical attributes on the pigeon themselves that you could tell that, you know, this is a good genetic or like, this is a good bird. Everybody different. Everybody handle their birds and look for different things. Um, for me, I'm looking at the tail. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking at, I'm looking at the wings. How cause, how the wings look? How long they are? How thick they are? You know what I'm saying? I'm looking at the kill, uh, the kill, the the bottom of the the bird. I'm looking at, you know, I'm not, you know, they got the eye sign where they really pay attention to the eyes. I ain't really gotten to that yet. You know what I'm saying? Right now, my birds is based upon race results and genetics. But um, I think I'm still I'm learning every day more and more as far as what I want. You know what I'm saying? As far as you know, I got I probably got like 75, 80 birds. You know, um, I could say I could for sure. I know which ones I like more. I I love you know. So yeah. for sure I can. I'm starting to have a um, a, a better understanding. A, a, yeah, better understanding of how I want to critique my breeding. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and then so like you know in other like the dog breeding. Are there like color differentiations or like f like different feathers that tell you there's a certain you know worth or performance to this? Nah, bird? like really like when you, when when it's a working animal in any sport like you color is like not a factor. You breed the you breed the animal for purely workability and whatever color come with it come with it. With these they usually coming out blue bar and and, and blue check, but. They got racing pigeons every color. They got chocolate racing pigeons, black racing, racing, racing pigeons. They got every color um, racing. They got every color racing pigeons, you know what I'm saying? But usually the birds that room win the prestigious races look the same. They're usually a blue bar, blue check. They usually look like the same pigeons. Okay, okay. And then, like, let's say you said that they travel, you know, very long distances. So, like, what's the average speed for them to, like, you know... For I mean, the, it depends. The, the wind is a major factor. Uh, you know, it might be hawks and other things that might change the direction or speed. So it's hard to really tell you, but anywhere between, I'd say, 1,500 to 2,000 yards per minute. You know what I'm saying? So they're flying pretty fast. And, um, you know, the weather is unpredictable, so you really can't predict the weather. Like, you know, so, so you might have thought it was a sunny day and there was going to be no wind. And then, you know, um, but just like uh, track, I mean, they got, you know, long, you know, long distance birds, short distance birds, sprint birds. So it's really based upon, you know, what genetics you got to what, compared to what races you want to send them to. So how long does it take for a, a bird to train for a race at a lot? A couple months. A couple months? Be going to send a bird to the race for a couple months. They're going to train it and then the race going to start. Oh, really? So it's just, it's a quick turnaround. Yeah, it's the only reason, is, I mean, it's not so quick, but <clears throat> it is quick because you can send birds to multiple races. It's, it's, it's multiple races a year. It's a lot, a lot of races. So you might be racing in five to ten races at a time. You know, you might send five birds over here, ten birds to this race, 15 birds to this race. So when you're sending birds to that many races, then you're probably not waiting on it as much if you were just racing one one race. You know what I'm saying? And so where, where in the world is this sport a little bit, you know, more of a centralized thing in there. Belgium. Belgium? In Belgium. Wow, international in waters. And Belgium is just where it's most concentrated. Um, but like in the last, I can't tell you how many years, but in the last couple of years, it's been blowing up, you know, all over the world. But they've been racing pigeons all over the world this whole time anyway. But just not, it just ain't never had like a light like it's starting to have right now. Um, and uh, I believe, I mean, a lot of them, Older dudes, you know, that, that was racing pigeons, they probably really, really know on YouTube and doing all that, you know, like that was kind of past their time. But like now you see everybody, like even six year old fanciers, you see old fanciers on YouTube now. So like the sport is starting to expand because people are starting to promote the sport. So a little bit more promotion goes a long way now. There's a lot more people going into it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Because there's not like a lot of international sports, like all people combined on. Like, I can't really compete with how, and I don't know no sport where me not being like a physical athlete, I can go compete with different countries. Like right now, I can go compete with these different countries. I mean, I ain't saying it ain't nothing like that, but I don't know nothing like that. Yeah, not not, not incorrect. Uh, so like, let's say the, so I'm starting out, 
this is my first year into the bird game. What's like the minimum purchase? Like, you know, give me a number on a rough idea of how to get into the game. See, like, some people will tell you, like, you know, don't spend a lot of money when you get, when you get a bird game, just figure it out. Or some people will tell you to go crazy. But I'm like me coming from breeding, coming from genetics, I know you got to get to start with the best. Or all that shit going to be for nothing. You're going to have to restart somewhere in your, in your breeding program. So I started with the best I can go get, you know what I'm saying? Um, I'm not finna do no starting over type shit unless I got to, but like, you know, you gotta spend money to get good things. Quality costs in anything, furniture, fucking. That's true, quality any, goes a long way. Any, anything you buying, like fucking dogs, you know, cars, the more money you spend, usually the better quality you looking at. It's the same thing for birds. When I first initially got the birds, in the meantime, between time, I franchised my business, so I was breeding for the franchises. Or every single one of my franchises came with two birds, one cock, one hen. Within the last four months, I've been about four or five months, I've been breeding for the franchises. Um, think about it, gotta make a long story short for me to give everybody equal opportunity at the same quality of genetics. I had to make a couple of each pair. Just got done with that process. Now I'm on to my next process. The next process is be breeding for for the races. And I watched my performance, you know what I'm saying? We here, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm smoked out, you know? I be, I be researching birds all day, all night, you know what I'm saying? I think about how I'm gonna breed them, which ones I'm gonna put put together, like, all fucking day, like, literally, you know what I'm saying? So, um, I'm very, very, um, you know, I trust myself as, as far as the way I plan to, you know, breed the birds, you know what I'm saying? And, um, like I said, watch my performance off, man. Y'all gonna see us on them racing charts. We plan on racing international races and um, United States races. So you're going to see us whether it's international races or United States races, straight one loft, all our straight one loft races. That's it. And uh, so yeah, it's a whole lot of the... Western performance. I'm, okay, so I'm starting out and I get just two wild pigeons. Would that work in a race or is there like special paperwork for, for them to race? No. Um, no, it's not going to work because. You talking about people that's breeding, been breeding racing pigeons, these genetics for like the last damn near 60, 60 to 100 years, and a bird off the street probably can't compete, but that don't mean it couldn't. I'm just saying I don't think it would. And um, all birds have pedigree with, with DNA. Um, you can get a DNA, you can get a DNA test on that bird, but it's not really gonna tell you nothing. It's just gonna tell you what it's off, but like not the parents. It's just gonna let you know it's its status. Um, you could do it. There's some races where you could do it. You know, clean the bird out, make sure it's medicated, and just lose your money. You know. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, hey, everybody, you know, get, they they got their own bag, so they could risk it. So, you know, you're very passionate in the world. Oh that. no, you couldn't do it. The bird, the bird has been homed already. So the bird's flying in the street, which means it already has a home. Uh, when you send a bird to a race, these are birds that never flew before. Oh, really? So if you that bird, if you caught a wild bird and send it to and send it to a race, and you let the bird out, it's gonna fly back home, or it's gonna attempt to fly back home. So it it wouldn't work at all. No, it wouldn't work. So you need to even if whatever you have to you have to start from fresh. You have to start fresh. The bird can't be homed already. The bird needs to be to where it never flew them. It never flew out like In the it world. never flew out in the, you know out in the open. Oh wow. Or it's gonna fly. Or it's gonna attempt to fly That's back it. home. Fair enough. Fair enough. That's okay. Never thought about it like that. Um, so you know, the world's seen that you're very passionate about the dog game. You know, we've seen you, uh, you know, make it over. You know, three times over. How great you know your kennel is and how much you've expanded it. Are you the same type of passionate with the birds and the pigeons or? For sure. I ain't gonna halfway do nothing. Or I ain't gonna do it. You know, I, I franchise my 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 performance law just like I franchise my my dog breed. You know what I'm saying? I got. I got franchises all over the United States, you know, built on racing pigeons. Um, a lot of people that never even had a bird before, you know, it made a lot of sense to them and they're going to do the same thing. Um, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, it probably just, um, the birds and the dogs, just, they just be promoted a little different. I'm kind of trying to bring like the bully promotion to like the, the pigeon world to try to kind of like blow it up more. Um, but yeah, I'm doing them the same though, like for sure. I got shit. I got damn near almost the same amount I got dogs and, and birds. Oh wow, deep in. All right, so 
wrapping it up with the the idea of the pigeons like let's say you're going into a race is there a way to like test flight a pigeon before you go they train them only... they train them before they fly so during training you can see the results some races pay you during training so some races you still get paid for training some races you don't but you can see the results of your pigeon before the race start to know what pigeon to activate like you might pay for that pigeon to go but it might not dig good in training so you don't pay it to activate it for the race Mm. But this other bird did good, so you're going you gonna to pay the fee to activate that bird towards the race. Training to give you a little, a little, a little, let you know like how your butter's doing. And that's before the race. That's way before the race, so you don't even have to, to risk it at the race. You, you know way beforehand. You're going to pay to get your bird to the, to, the, to the race. So by the time your bird was training already, the people them got paid already. But you didn't pay for the race yet. You just paid your purse fee and whatever they charge you to do what you have is for sending the bird and shit. Like, they didn't charge you for the race because you didn't start the race yet. But every, when the race start, you pay for activation to activate your bird. So if, during training, if the bird don't do good, you don't have to send it to the race. You might pay a couple hundred dollars for that bird being there, but there's no point to send it to the race if you feel like it's not gonna do good, you know? What you jumping in the game, being who you are, where you from, uh, and doing the performance loft, what's the, because in, in, in the world that we come from, the dog world, it, it works, right? Tattoos, not looked against. A young black dude, not looked against, right? But we're talking like some real shit, right? This is world, this is world renowned. This is like niggas is really with castles and big, big, big bread and you know what I mean? And then they see you coming up, you know, with the, with the so-called rapper look, talking about you know what you're talking about with these birds, right? Yeah. So how has that been a, uh, you know, has it, has it been something that you had to get over or has it been something that you really haven't had to because they trust and believe in you as a person when they talking to you and they trust the business behind it. So the look that comes with it don't matter. I'm gonna be honest with you. If that was smart, they'd be like, go crazy. Okay. Because I feel like the pigeon sport needs something like me. You know what I'm saying? My people is not involved. My people are, are, are some of the biggest consumers in the world or whatever we do consume. Yes. So I feel like if you love the sport, why wouldn't you like more competition, more people involved? Right. Now, if you're looking at me like, oh, he's racing pigeons, you must don't like pigeons because that's the sport, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, that don't, that, that's a contradiction to what you like doing. Okay. Uh, but uh, if you did look at me and, 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 and like question, like, damn, that's crazy. Like, he don't look nothing like me, but he into the same shit, you know? Uh, like, that shouldn't be a reason why you should, like, be like, oh, uh, why he wants the pigeons. Because, nigga, it's, it's different, you know what I mean? It's like us pulling up and we, we, we playing corridos or something, you know what I mean? It's like, okay, I know, like, it, it, the nigga might be from Southern California. He might know a little bit about the shit, but he just pulled up with the whole band, tattoos all on his face with a guitar, nigga, and he's out here really killing shit. That's the way I'm looking at you jumping into the pigeon game. It's like, you're so, I don't, you know what I mean? Like, you're so far left of what they're used to seeing. Does it scare them, or does it, is it more inviting? Is it like, okay, I'll be honest with you. Everybody that I met that I fuck with pigeons is like the nicest people in the world. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about, I'm flying out to their house. I flew out to uh, Georgia multiple times with Otto. I flew out to, uh, you know, Delaware, to Aztec, to Romero. I can treat it like family when I, you know, when I step out. So, uh, no, like I ain't never got that. You know what I'm saying? So no I, just, I, I, I ain't going to hold you. I probably see like a little hating little shit on YouTube, like a little on the comment section. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, y'all just look like some woo 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 But like, like. You can never understand this unless you really know. Like, that's what this shit for. So y'all can understand this. Like, but we don't know. you like, we come from, we come from where it's hard to get right here, you know? So, like, you should really respect the process that we got right here. It shouldn't be like, no, ah, uh, like, why they racing pigeons? We gonna blow it up. Right. You know right, what I'm right, saying? Right, we right, gonna right, blow right. it up. And, like, the more people that's racing pigeons, the better. Sometimes, like, some, some type of games can get saturated. So the dog game. It could get saturated at times if you don't have rank or have motion, like really got motion. By meaning, like you know, everybody want to breed dogs because they hear there's money into it. But now the prices on certain dogs drop because everybody and their mama got dogs to sell. But that shit really can't happen with racing pigeons because the more people that get into racing pigeons, that means the more money in the pot because the more birds is more birds in race. So the more people that race, the better people yeah. for the sport. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, it, and a lot of other things is not so much like that. 
Okay. So what do you, being the owner of Westmount Performance Loft, bring to the pitching game that you feel like isn't there now? <laughs> I bring that. I, I, I bring that charisma. I bring that. I bring that energy. I can't say it ain't there because, you know, I'll be disrespecting the sport of people that have been doing it for their whole life. But I bring something that I know for sure ain't in the pitching game. You know what I'm saying? I'm different, you know? I'm like a whole, like, my energy is precious, you know? Anything I do touch gold, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I ain't just talking like, bro, I know how to breathe. You know what I'm saying? Like, this shit, I, I, me being able to be financially even have some money to even buy a bird come from me knowing how to breathe. That shit don't come from... You know what I'm saying? I shouldn't even fall out the sky. Right, right, right. So it's right. like, you know what I'm saying? Um, so when it comes to... Uh, breeding people, birds is hard, though. Let me say that. We're not breeding for something that we see within dogs. We're breeding for physical traits. Mm. And birds, you... Mm -hmm. So wouldn't that make it easier? If you breed it... If I know that I could go to... I might not be able to afford it, right? But I, if I know if I go to this bloodline, this bloodline, and this bloodline, and they all been winning these last couple races, and I put my birds together off of that... Don't that give me an advantage because I don't went to the top bird? It do give you an advantage. Go ahead. It do give you an advantage. But the people that you're racing against are still the people you mind against pigeons too. Mm. They finna send they, they top shit. Mm. So that don't mean that you finna just win because you bought some, some right. best genetics. You still so, gotta race them people. So that you, you bought that against shit for. like like um, They say you're a piece to the puzzle. It's up to you to know how to put it together properly. Mm. They say you're a piece to the puzzle. Like if you know how to manipulate the genetics correctly, you can get something better than them, worse than them, or equal to them. Okay. It's based upon how good you know how to breed. Okay. Okay. Now now what uh oh, man, I'm gonna say kennels because that's all I know, but what bird lofts are out there? that are like the top two or three? Who's the families or the lofts that are out there that kind of took the last couple big races? Is there anybody out there, like any names that come? You know, in the dark, I mean. Or not to best kittle. Those genetics, okay, so they said the hardest race in the world is Victoria Far South Africa. And two years in a row, uh, or not to best kittle did it. So last year it was or not Soraya to best kittle. And the year before that it was or not Super 46 to best kittles. So it's like, uh, them birds be consistent, and that's a very hard race, so it's very respected. And I probably got like, here I probably got like 30 birds or not, 10 birds best kittle. Um, um, People Elite Center is a heavy, super good breeding camp. Um, they are like the auction. They are like the Walmart for, for birds, but I probably get a more credit than Walmart because they sell only exclusive shit. Right. Um, a Hardy Kruger out of Germany is super heavy. Um, he's selling high power birds. Aztec out of Delaware and Otto Family Loft out of Georgia is high power shit. Mike Gannis out of Indiana. It's a lot of camp. Okay. And West Mount Exotic Loft, high power. West Mount Performance Loft, we got high, high, hyper exclusive, high performance birds, but we have no, um, we ain't got no credit history. Okay. So we ain't, you know what I'm saying? So we don't got no. We don't got proof of nothing. Okay. We got we just got the tools. Okay. But everybody in the dog game know what I'm gonna do with the tools already. Yeah. Or we gonna do with the tools and everybody in the pigeon game kinda wanna see. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like we you know, it's just, it's just the process. Right. Right, right, right. Okay, so um shit, when it comes to selling the birds, um, do you sell baby birds do you sell full grown birds is selling of the birds not something that you do right now because you building outside of your loft it's when not, you, you know when we decide to start right now we're not but when we, when we decide to start selling birds we're gonna auction them um there's multiple auctions in the united states so we're gonna throw our own auction and um most people want to buy birds around a year old so they, they breeding age you know what i'm saying so they can get the bird and they can get right to their plans you know what I'm saying? You can sell birds, young birds around 30, 40, I mean 40, 45 days old and all that, but um, right now we're not selling no birds. We're based upon breeding the shit we have to create the best that we, we could do. And um, I'd probably say by the end of the year, we, we, we'll be we start selling birds and maybe middle of the year, we might have some birds for sale. You know what I'm saying? We got the clumper birds. Uh, these birds, I do not breed for sport. I breed these for foster parents to take care of sport, bird, sport birds. They are racing homers. The same breed as the birds we sport birds. Um, they just cheaper quality. So these birds right here probably cost cost me about twenty five dollars each. 
And uh, like I said, these are the pumpers, the foster parents of the birds, and we take care of, uh, of them just as well as we do the birds that we spent all the money for, being as uh, we're animal lovers one, and for two, they take care of the expensive bird eggs, so they should be treated just, just as equal. And um, yeah, we got about probably, probably about 40 pumpers right now. Probably gonna get a couple more. But the pumpers, we use those um, same things that everybody uses them for to faster the process of the, of the babies. Um, with pumpers, we could, the, the production process of the eggs are faster. Okay. And what's the start off for a bird? One of your birds? 5K. Okay. 5K coming in the gate. Yeah, but if it's not quality, I ain't gonna sell it to you. Like, I'm gonna let it go. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sell you nothing. That, like trying to use my brand to to, 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 to to make some more money than the bird deserves. If it's not the quality that I feel like that 5K quality, then I, I ain't gonna have nothing for you. You know what I'm saying? Either I'm gonna have, it's gonna be 5K and it's gonna be worth it. It's gonna be worth 5K or better and I'm gonna sell it to you for starting at five or I'm not gonna have them for you. I'm not selling nobody no bird. I'm just cause like, cause I see it's people that got cheaper birds. And it's like, my, I'm gonna make sure that I'm only gonna have the best of the best. So, you know, when you come over here, you can feel content knowing that you're gonna get some high power, you know, some hyper exclusive. Okay, okay. Now, is there anything that you wanna to say to the bird world or anybody who's looking to get into this world? Uh... Yeah, man, it's uh, Westmont Performance, Loft, you know what I'm saying? We, you know, we all love the United States, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna, we're gonna be coming real heavy in the racing pigeons. I ain't gonna do like too much of talking about what we're gonna do. You know, I, I like the birds to kind of show what they're gonna do. And um, I got heavy aspirations as far as, you know, racing pigeons and, and, and what we're gonna do coming forward. Um, like I said, we got a little bit of everything. We got black power genetics, we got Ornon genetics, we got Sharky, we got Best Kittle. We got Soraya, we got Super 46, we got African Heat, we got Zulu, we got Red Monkey, Verhaline, uh, we got Wolverine, Wolverine, we got um, Casboard Blood, we got Porsche 911, we got, you know, we got some of that Waco Freddy, we got some of that Thomas 6, and uh, we know how to breed, we ain't just crossing all this together and throwing it in the race, we know, we know how to breed, we got the tools that we need to, and, um, I want to give a shout out to Auto Family Loft and Aztec Loft for providing me uh, with a head start on the game. And man, it's a whole lot of West Point performance.